Good morning, 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 everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms whenever God gives me a word to share. I come on and I share it with you. So really quick this morning, I want to talk to you uh, really, really quick this morning. First of all, thank God it's Friday. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you really quick this morning from the topic of why you went through why you went through what am I talking about today let's jump in really really quick so uh, you hear me me talk about how different people have different walks of life and so you may come across some people who have you know there are people out there and, and, I, and I have to say this because for people like me it's hard to imagine it but it's true it's people out there who have never even been in a fight in their life, like a physical fight. There are people who have never been jumped on. There are people who've never jumped on anybody. There's never, there's people who have never uh, struck somebody or, or there's people who have never been struck. I mean, there are people who don't know anything about that life. There are people who don't know anything about struggle. There are people who, who were essentially born with a silver spoon in their mouth. They were born into wealth. That was a lifestyle for some people, but then there are other people like me who have went through the poverty, who have went through the fights, uh, domestic violence, uh, all kinds of things, addiction. I mean, there are those of us who have a story to tell. And many of us can't relate to people who have never been through anything. And even though it has made us strong, we wonder why did we have to go through that? Why did we have to go through the molestation? Why did we have to go through poverty? Why did we have to go through divorce? Why did we have to go through you know, being abandoned, rejected, whatever your story is. Cause every, I mean, people have the, the, the spectrum is so wide of the things that people have gone through, you know, for you, you might be looking at poverty and homelessness, but then there was somebody else who was actually a victim of human trafficking. So, you know, when you look at your story and then you look at theirs, you say, my goodness, it was bad what I went through, but my God, at least I wasn't part of, of human trafficking, you know, not making light of it, but just, just bringing awareness to the fact that there are so many varying degrees to people going through in life. Some people really haven't gone through much of anything. And then there are people who have gone through so much. And so there comes a time where you look and you say, God, you know, in Romans 8, 28, you know, he said that it will work for our good, but there are times that we'll sit back and say, God, why did I have to go through so much? And that's why I want to talk to you today from the topic of why you went through. See, Romans 8, 28 told you that everything was going to work for your good, right? And so you're looking and you're saying, how could that have possibly worked for my good? Because it didn't feel good. I still got the scars. I still have uh, the signs and the residue on me. How did this work towards my good? I'm getting ready to tell you how. So think about the first time you got a ticket. The first time you got a ticket, you know, a driving ticket, a speeding, you know, that thing scared the poot out of you because you're thinking, oh my God, what's getting ready to happen? I just got a ticket, right? But guess what happens the third or the fourth time you get a ticket? The third or the fourth time, now you're not getting ready to poop yourself. Instead, you know what's getting ready to happen and you know how to respond. You know that, okay, I'm going to get a lawyer, right? And then I'm going to try to get that reduced, right? So it won't go on my insurance. You're used to this thing. The sting of it that was there the first go round is not there anymore. The more that you went through it, the more that you go through it, guess what? The sting goes away. Uh, those of you who listen to my podcast, you have heard me talk about the infamous 2019 year in, of my life uh, when we had the five deaths. Um, and so it was some stingers. I ain't gonna lie. I went crazy. And the crazy thing was the people around me, most of them didn't realize that I had gone crazy as a result of those five deaths until after I actually started coming too. But as a result of that, as horrible of an experience as it was for me, well, honey, now when I go to funerals, it's not to be callous, but after you go through five funerals of close loved ones over the course of a six month period, you know, that sting is not really there anymore. So I might've broke down then, but now guess what? 
I'm used to that thing. So I hate to see people go, but that grieving response that you would normally see from somebody, you probably not, you probably not going to see that from me. It's, it's going to have to be pretty severe for you to see me get back to that point again. Why? Cause I went through it and it was such a stinger. It was so traumatic then that now, as the scripture said, oh, death, where's your sting? It affects me different and I present different when, when I'm dealing with death, right? So when you're looking at things that have happened over your life and you're saying, why did I have to go through? It didn't feel good, but what it did, it, it produced an endurance in you. It produced an immunity. There's a good word. It produced an immunity in you. So whereas Satan could have got you in 2019 with death, the sting of death, well, guess what? The sting, it's lost this thing because you done been through it so much. Guess what? You know how to get right back up again. Whereas somebody else would have been gone crazy. You instead still after something traumatic happens, go home, eat your milk and your cookies. And people will look at you and say, you're callous. You're not callous, but you done been through it so much that it has produced a resilience in you where Satan just can't use these same things on you over and over and over again and get the devastating response that he is looking for. The scripture says it like this. Turn with me in your Bibles to Isaiah, the, um, Isaiah the 59th chapter, go down to the 19th verse. I'm in the King James version here. And it reads, so they shall fear the name of the Lord from the West and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And so when the enemy has come in your life like a flood for so long and done all these things to you because you've gone through it so much, it's lost its sting in you. So when it says that the enemy, that when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The standard against him is the resiliency that only came from you having to go through what you went through. So because you went through what you did, in that season of your life, in the next season of your life, that same thing that Satan used in that season and was successful, it has no, it has no success in the next season of your life because God has lifted up a standard in the midst of everything that you went through. And the standard is now that you have become resilient. Now, when the same thing happens again, you know what to do. When somebody walks out and leaves you and breaks up with you and ghosts you and never hear from you again, you go home and eat your chips and cookies and, and snacks and whatever else you want to do it. You sleep real good at night because you done been through it enough. You want to know why you went through. You went through because it produced a, a resiliency in you and that is the standard that God has lifted up in your life so that when the enemy tries to come in like a flood, you done been through it. So it doesn't have that effect on you anymore. It's not going to break you down next time because you done been through it and the sting is gone. And so my word for today is that many of you are looking and saying, God, why did I have to go through? You may not realize it, but your going through produced a, a standard in your life. And what happens is when the enemy comes in like a flood in the next season, guess what happens? God lifts up that same standard. And where the enemy thought that you were going to go crazy, where the enemy thought that you were going to end it all, where the enemy thought that you were going to snap, when the enemy thought that you were just going to quit your job, when the enemy thought that you were just going to stop paying your bills, when the enemy thought that you were just going to stop eating and end up in the hospital, it didn't happen. Why? Because God lifted up a standard that only came through the things that you went through in your life. It didn't feel good, but it worked for your good. And so next time when the enemy comes in like a flood with his tactics and his uh, crafty devices, guess what, baby? The sting is gone and God will lift up a standard that only comes through the resiliency that was produced by your going through. That's why you went through because it didn't feel good. But how many of us know that the things that don't feel good often work the best for your development? Just like food, the stuff that doesn't taste good, that's the stuff that's best for you. And in the same way, the things that happen in life that don't feel good, it don't feel good. It don't taste good when you're trying to swallow them bitter pills. But let me tell you something, it works for your good. And that is the best 
for you because it produces something that only it can produce in your life. And that is a resiliency that came as a result of what you went through. I hope that word blessed you. I am Grace Amber. Happy Friday. I love y'all. Have a good weekend. Don't do too much. Be safe. And I'll be right back on Monday with another word. Good Lord willing.